1. What is denatured alcohol? Alcohol is often thought as... I'll have 17 shots of vodka, a martini and a Long Island iced tea, please. Of course it's all for me! But this is not always the case. Denatured alcohol, which is also known as methylated spirit, alcohol denat, and even SD alcohol, to name a few, is used in cosmetics for a variety of reasons. So ethanol often starts its life as a really simple sugar. This sugar is fermented by bacteria such as yeast, if you think about beer and wine, or synthesized in a laboratory from ethylene. The structure of ethanol is actually rather simple. It can be split into to two distinct regions, eth and anol. The eth region is denoted by two linked carbon groups, one of which is a methyl group and the other is a methylene group. This methylene group is attached to the oxygen molecule of the hydroxyl group, forming the anol region. Let's say it together. Ethanol. It is also a clean burning renewable energy source. However, according to international guidelines, those pesky things, ethanol must be denatured in order to use in products. Otherwise, you could sip your setting spray in order to get a morning buzz. Hashtag, don't do that, babe. You won't be very well, and we're about to find out why. So denatured alcohol is essentially ethanol with added compounds in order to make it toxic for human consumption. And if consumed, this poison can cause a variety of very very unsightly side effects. It can cause blindness, permanent damage to the esophagus, and even death. So in the European economic area, before 2013, these regulations on how alcohol was denatured actually varied by country. So denatured alcohol from one country could vary quite greatly in its compounds compared to another country. Perhaps this is why back in the day, some of us have experienced different outcomes when using alcohol-based products from different regions. It might even be time to revisit some of those old products and see if they still have the same effect, especially as their European formulations may have had to be updated since 2013. So why is denatured alcohol used in cosmetics? What are we doing? Why are we using it? What's it here for? Excuse me, madam, tell me why you're here. Aside from the long list of uses for alcohol, one of its primary wondrous effects is its ability to cold sterilize. You will see this frequently used in the medical industry in order to sterilize equipment, to sterilize patches, sterilize boo-boos, both serious and minor, sterilize probes and clamps, and even for sanitizing hands. As a secondary effect to this first property, it also provides excellent preserving qualities. Mold and bacteria really do not like alcohol, as alcohol is an amphiphilic compound. This means that it both loves water and fat molecules. So a bacterium cell wall is made of lipids. These are a type of fat that is used by cells as energy and structure. Ethyl alcohol binds to this lipid membrane and denatures it, which is a really fancy word for annihilation. In short, it's an excellent preservative and it's cheap. So aside from these two main important properties of alcohol, it also reduces viscosity. And that means that formulas will be easier to spread and evaporate from the surface of which they are applied. 2. Old Before My Time Many beauty gurus and skincare brands will have you believe that using products with alcohol in will cause premature aging and damage to the skin which it is applied. So, uh, Madam Big Brand CEO, why do you recommend that your customers avoid alcohol-placed products in exchange for your specific specialised alcohol-free products? Isn't it obvious? Is it your first day as a beauty editor intern? So I can sell them my product at a higher price point for the illusion of superiority. To find out if there is any truth to the claim that alcohol will cause premature aging and skin damage, we must away to PubMed. In a paper titled, The Final Report of the Safety Assessment of Alcohol Denat, published in the International Journal of Toxicology in 2008, link in the description, states that, denatured alcohol in cosmetics behaves as an astringent, solvent, and both an anti-foaming agent and a viscosity reducing agent. Table two shows that SD alcohol 39 through 40C are all considered safe for use in multiple formulations. These include creams and sprays for the face, 
So why do we care about these different types of alcohol? So each of these different types of SD alcohol are actually denatured using a different method. And for the purpose of this video essay, I'm going to be concentrating on SD alcohol 39 and 40. So as you can see from table one in this paper, the specification of federal regulation required for these alcohols is as follows. SD alcohol 39 requires nine pounds of sodium salicylate, USP or salicylic acid, my favorite. USP and 1.25 gallons of fluid extract of quassia, NF and one eighth of a gallon of T-butyl alcohol. That to me sounds like quite a recipe. SD alcohol 40 requires one eighth of a gallon of T-butyl alcohol and 1.5 Evoir du Poir ounces, Evoir du Poir? Evoir du Poir ounces of any combination of one or more of the following, brucine alkaloid, brucine sulfate, NF or quasin. Now this is the part of science where it becomes a little bit difficult and very difficult to relate it in easy to understand terms because this is quite complex. Spoiler alert, chemistry is quite complex. So because of the complexity of this paper, I'm just going to focus in on those two alcohols and how they relate to our safety. So just as a disclaimer, this applies to FDA regulated SD alcohol. So alcohols you are likely to find in American products. So we can ask, what are the safety concerns with these alcohols? Well, in the conclusion of this paper, it states that the expert panel concluded that the available data are insufficient to support the safety of alcohol denat SD39 and SD40 when denatured with quasin, brucine, and brucine sulfate in cosmetic products. So this is a little bit where it kind of differentiates from the regulations in Europe. And I really wanted to further understand what exactly the safety concerns are with these alcohols. And you might be asking, But Luxaria, what does this mean? What's happening? Why is it so frustrating? And you've got me there. It is really frustrating when dealing with two separate regulation entities. So this paper actually cites a rather interesting reference, and that is a safety data sheet from the Americam Sales Corporation in 2000 for their 95% ethanol product. I really wanted to find out what exactly the safety concerns are with this product via the American Sales Corporation website itself. However, this corporation only provides its safety data sheets to other businesses and potential buyers. As I am neither a business nor a potential buyer, I was unable to get the access I required to continue this section of the video. Unfortunately, this road was cut short. And sometimes I have to say that this is actually very typical when dealing with science corporations. Sometimes there really isn't just a well-rounded, nice, clear answer to a question. Yet. Three. Contemporary denatured alcohol. In February 2013, the European Union, together with the European Medicines Agency, came to an agreement that every single country in the European Union should have a standard for producing their denatured alcohol. From the multitude of different ways to produce this denatured alcohol, came one method. That is, for every 100 litres of absolute alcohol, it must be denatured with three litres of isopropyl alcohol, three litres of methyl ethyl ketone, and one gram of denatonium benzoate. Now that is a tongue twister. So in order to find more relevant information on this new way of developing denatured alcohol, I went over to my favourite chemical supply company, Sigma Aldrich, which is now actually known as Merck. Okay. Marvelously, this SDS is actually free to everyone to search for. So you can go to their website and look at it yourself via my links in the description box below. So the safety data sheet for denatured alcohol was actually updated in 2018. As you can see here under the hazard identification, the signal word for denatured alcohol is danger. That means that it is both a highly flammable liquid and vapor. It will cause serious eye irritation, may cause internal damage to organs, and toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. You must keep away from heat, hot surfaces, sparks, open flames, and other ignition sources. You must not smoke while using this substance. Keep the container tightly closed and do not breathe the dust, fume, gas, mist, vapors, or spray. Avoid release into the environment, and in case of fire, use dry sand, not water. Now this all sounds very, very dramatic. Why on earth would we want this in our cosmetics that we are applying to our face? If it's possibly toxic to the aquatic environment, if it will cause serious skin damage, and the signal word is DANGER! To answer this question, we need to do further research. 
my favorite. So it is important to note that this SDS is relating to a single ingredient, that ingredient of course being denatured alcohol, and not in fact when it's used in a formulation. The use of ingredients within cosmetics is highly, highly regulated, both by the FDA and by the EMA. This SDS safety hazard that I have read to you is not by any means descriptive of the amount of alcohol that will be present in cosmetics to be used on the skin, hair, body, face, eyes, feet. In the exciting world of cosmetic chemistry, every single cosmetic product must be released with a CPSR, and that stands for Cosmetic Product Safety Report. Unfortunately, these are not free of charge to obtain and are not easily accessible to the public. I think we can all probably guess why that might be. I'm gonna interject here and just suggest that it's probably to protect intellectual property rights, formulations, and patents. Thanks, capitalism. At this point in the video, I had hoped to actually gain access to a CSPR for a product, at least one, so that I could go into it and devolve exactly how much alcohol is used within it. Unfortunately, that has not manifested. Four. The illustrious example. So at this point in my research, I really, really wanted access to an example formulation so I could really understand just how much alcohol is likely to be in a formulation for a favorite product. Let's pick one. Makeup setting spray. Not everyone uses makeup setting spray, and that's fine. But it is notorious for having alcohol rather high up in its ingredients list. If you've been following my previous video essays on what's in my makeup, you will know that Google Patents is a wondrous resource. Within this interactive tome, a great wealth of example formulations exist for the purpose of education. While initially researching this video, I had kind of concentrated on denatured alcohol as this kind of abstract concept, an order to learn a little bit more about it. But actually, in order to provide any useful information going forwards, I have to look at it in context. Right here in front of me, I have my absolute favorite setting spray. I'm not going to share to you what it is, but I'm sure you can probably guess what it is if you've seen any of my other videos. Interestingly, in this ingredients list, alcohol denat appears second after water. Potentially, I have just been spraying mostly alcohol with a few other select ingredients directly onto my my face every day. As I was unable to access any CPSR for a specific makeup setting spray product, I decided to head over to Google Patents and see if I could find a good example formulation of one. And I managed to find something I was not expecting to find. In 2012, a patent was filed for the use of cooling agents to improve cosmetics. The current assignee is Scandinavia Incorporated and involves a pumpable liquid spray formulation for retarding the degradation of color cosmetics. Essentially, a mattifying, oil control, makeup setting spray. Scandinavia is a very well-known makeup setting spray brand. They produce sprays that are absolutely perfect for bridal wear, for event wear, for long wear waterproof makeup, and you will notice many of the big beauty gurus using their products. So in this formula list, you can clearly see that denatured alcohol appears second to water at a concentration of 9%. So let's put that into context, shall we? Let's say this color cosmetic degradation prevention setting spray is 118 milliliters in volume. So 9% of that volume would be denatured alcohol. That's 10.6 milliliters of 95% ethanol in every bottle. And let's say that an average spritz from this spray bottle is about 0.2 milliliters. That means that every spritz that you spray upon your face contains 0.018 milliliters of 95% ethanol. That's actually a very small amount of ethanol. In a study by Sung Yong Kwak et al. in 2011, titled Ethanol Perturbs Lipid Organization in Models of Stratum Corneum Membranes, an investigation combining differential scanning calorimetry, infrared, and NMR spectroscopy, the team built a model of the outer layer of mammalian skin also known as the stratum corneum. So this outer layer is probably our most vital layer for our skin. It provides the most essential barrier between our insides and the outside. 
and it comprises mostly of waterproof, fully differentiated epithelial cells. So this study explored the potential effect that ethanol may have on the stratum corneum at various different concentrations. So this study focused mainly on alcohol-based hand sanitizers in the medical profession, and postulated that little attention had been devoted to studying the potential unexpected effects of repetitive exposure to these gels based on the integrity of the skin barrier. So this is a really well-written study and completely free access. I will post the links in the description box below so you can do some further reading if you really want to. The team exposed their model of the stratum corneum to varying ethanol concentrations and used a combination of tests to determine the results. The results in this study demonstrate that no significant difference was observed between the alcohol-free control group and the 10% alcohol group, indicating that alcohol concentrations up to 10% did not disrupt the model stratum corneum, and that is a great result. 5. My Opinion one study does not a breakthrough make. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, our skin is our responsibility. The investigations I've spoke about in this video prove to me that denatured alcohol is actually not problematic to the skin, especially in the concentrations that we use within our cosmetics. At least in the example of the makeup setting spray that I found, which is 9%. The previously mentioned study did actually find problems with the stratum corneum when the concentration of alcohol started to get towards 20, 30, 40, and higher percentages. Personally, I do not have sensitive skin. I believe the phrase sensitive skin is actually far too overused. Here on YouTube, you will hear every beauty guru say that they have sensitive skin because they've had a reaction to a pretty harsh cleanser or something similar. Now, it's not that I'm calling them liars, but to genuinely have sensitive skin is actually a rare condition. If you apply a harsh cleanser to your skin and it goes pink, you do in fact just have skin. Our skin is a living, active organ. In fact, it is the biggest organ that we have, and it reacts to the outside environment as a form of protection. This does not mean you have sensitive skin. Inflammation and redness as a reaction to a harsh cleanser being applied to the skin is a very normal skin function, and a normal skin function that everyone will experience. However, that being said, due to the nature of probability, a few of you watching this video are likely to actually have legitimate sensitive skin. And you will likely have come across a slew of products that you absolutely cannot use now because your skin really hated it. From my own experience, I have only really met one person who genuinely has sensitive skin. And I actually have to be really careful with the products that I choose to advise them about and also the products that I would use on their skin. Personally, I can only talk from my experience. And I have not personally come across a cosmetic product with alcohol in that has caused me excessive skincare problems. As with the majority of cases when it comes to product like this, I think that consideration is key absolute key. So I use my favorite setting spray about five or six pumps after I finished my entire face. So this does mean that my skin will get a dose of denatured alcohol. But the consideration part of that in my makeup routine is that under my makeup, I actually have a carefully skilled and planned skincare routine, which consists of a basic palmitic acid based soap and a light moisturizer. And then twice per week in the evenings, a salicylic acid based treatment. My relationship with skincare is purely functional. It needs to serve a purpose in my life. And with this relatively simple skincare regimen, I find that I am effectively mitigating any damage that denatured alcohol may be causing my skin. And in fact, when it comes to denatured alcohol and aging, I think actually we should all be worrying about sun damage, which accounts for about 70% of the damage you see on your face at the age of 40. But if you still find yourself concerned about the amount of denatured alcohol within your products, by all means, limit their use. You will not be judged by me for wanting to find a routine that works for you. 